Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, today we are going to be looking at Unique Spears. Uh, there's not a huge amount of Unique Spears, so uh, you know we're going to go over these pretty fast. And uh, it's not going to be not going to be too difficult here. So we're going to start out with the uh, normal Unique Spears. And the first normal Unique Spear is the Dragon Chang Spear. The Jag Dragon Chang Spear is very low level at level 8, has a uh, 13 to 15 damage, which is which is pretty high for a level 8 spear. Uh, 35 to attack rating, 3 to 6 fire damage, and 2 to light radius. And of course you can socket it if you'd like. Now, the damage spread 13 to 15 is actually really sweet, and it only has 20 dexterity requirements, so very low level spear, very something that you could throw on a, a low level spear is on or something like that, or uh, maybe a charge it in, or, you know. But not something that's going to last you much longer past level 8 because you're going to find better spears. Alright, next on the list is the Razor Tine Trident, which has a very unique look. And uh, if you actually look up in the top left hand corner of the video, you'll see the um, Diablo 2 Resurrected version of the Razor Tine, which is pretty darn cool. And um, the Razor Tine also shares its graphic with the uh, Kelpie Snare Fushina. So the Razor Tine has 30 to 50% enhanced damage, uh, slows target by 25%, which is an amazing slow. Um, the slows target by is a slow that is shared with many skills that people love. For instance, uh, Holy Freeze is slows targets by, Decrepify is slows targets by, uh, the Clay Golem's attack is slows targets by. And then on top of that, you also have slows target by on individual items. So this would be a very uh, beautiful spear to give to a a low level um, merc, uh, like an act two merc, because you're giving him the slows targets by 25%, which is going to stack on top of, uh, you know, whatever other effects he has. So, you know, if you manage to get a hold of the um, nightmare version with the holy freeze, it'll stack on top of his holy freeze, which is beautiful. Um, so, you know, it, that, that particular effect stacks up to 85%, so that slow can go very, very, very far. All right, so we have. 30% increased attack speed, negative 50% to target's defense, which is only going to apply to the person using it, by the way, um, not everyone. Um, we also have plus 8 to dexterity and plus 15 to strength, so very, very nice spear there. I've actually um, socketed those before, put an AM in them, and upgraded them to the Nightmare difficulty just to give them to a, uh, a low-level Merc, you know, like a... Uh, like level 30 Act 2 Nightmare Mercenary with Holy Freeze, uh, because it just works so beautifully with Holy Freeze in tandem. Uh, I mean, obviously this could be used by just about anybody who wants to use a spear, though, with the 30% uh, increased attack speed, the negative 50% target's defense, the slows target by 25%. All those very, very nice effects, which are going to make this a very nice spear. Uh, the main downside of this is the fact that it has 13 to 22 damage, which is not the greatest, uh, which is one of the reasons why some people will upgrade it to use it on, you know, other characters. However, if you manage to find the Kelpie Snare, which we'll talk about later, uh, it may be a good replacement. Next on the list is the Blood Thief Brandy Stock. Uh, the Blood Thief Brandy Stock is 10 to 25 damage with 50% uh, enhanced damage, which actually should be 59 it's supposed to be 59% enhanced damage. Has 9% lifesteal, which is static, which is interesting because most lifesteal on weapons is not. It usually varies. 35% chance of open wounds, plus 10 to strength, and 20 to 26 to life. Um, this particular spear is interesting just simply because it has a good amount of lifesteal early on. So it could be something that you could, you know, find and throw on your... You know, your Act 2 Mercenary, give him some good lifesteal early on in the game. Also some extra strength so he can put on equipment. And the, and the extra life isn't anything to, to laugh at either. 26 life on a little low level, level 17 Mercenary is actually pretty sweet. Uh, next on the list is the Lance of Yagi. Uh, speed him. <laughs> the Lance of Yag, Yag, Yagai, Yagai probably. 15 to 23 damage. Um, has much higher strength and dex requirements than these. Um, I believe the Brandy stock is pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, but level 22 requirements. We're getting into the higher level spears. Has a very fast attack speed thanks to that plus 40% increased attack speed on it. Uh, has 1 to 60 lightning damage. All resistances plus 15. 
and the attacker takes damage of eight. None of these uh, effects, by the way, vary at all. So very, very interesting here that so far we've had almost no variance on any of these, uh, with the exception of the Razor Tine Trident, which varies in the damage. None of these have varied on any of their stats so far. Um, last on the normal difficulty spears is the Tanner Gore Rod Pike with 28 to 126 damage. And pikes are the slowest weapons in the game. So as you can see, you have a slow attack speed there, uh, which is made up for by the massive amount of damage that they do per hit. Um, something fun to use maybe on a Chargedin who is, you know, not so worried about how fast his weapon attacks as how much damage he's doing per charge. And the stats on this are 80 to 100% enhanced damage, which is going to make a big difference if you're going for this for damage. Uh, static 23 to 54 fire damage, 60 to attack rating, fire resist 15%, max resist for fire 15%, and then uh, plus 30 to life and plus 3 to light radius. Pretty much no variation here with the exception of the 80 to 100 enhanced damage, so interesting. The only thing about this though is it is very, very slow, so you're going to have to find some way to, to count for that, most likely some sort of IAS. Next on the list is the Impaler War Spear, which is the first of our Nightmare Uniques. The Impaler, Impaler War Spear is 27 to 99 damage, has very fast attack speed, 20% increased attack speed, 170% enhanced damage, which does vary between 140 to 170. It has 150 to attack rating, also it ignores target's defense, which is just weird. Um, I'm not sure why it would have both those stats on there at the same time. Uh, ITD generally means you don't need attack rating, and uh, attack rating is generally for, you know, when you don't have ITD. So, it's kind of weird. 40% <laughs> chance of open wounds. Uh, plus 5 to impale, which is a very nice Amazon skill. Uh, it's kind of a slow attack, but it does a lot of damage. Uh, plus 3 to power strike, which is another Amazon melee skill. Uh, that's lightning, by the way. Uh, and then Prevent Monster Heal, which is a whole slew of different different stats on there. Um, everything on it is static except for the enhanced damage. Next on the list is the Nightmare version of the uh, Trident, the Kelpie Snare Fushina, with 83 to 153 damage, 180% uh, enhanced, 30 to 50 just added right on. Um, so it has 140 to 180, it's a little variable there. And, uh, and then it has that static amount added as well. Um, slows target by 75%. So as you can see, we've upgraded from the 25% on the Razor Tine. Um, if you stacked this on a Act 2 Mercenary with Holy Freeze, um, he would definitely be slowing everything to the 85% cap, that's for sure. Um, plus 10 to Strength, and then it has Life based on character level, which is 1 to 123 life, so 1.25 per character level. Fire resist 50% and uh, plus 10 to strength. So very interesting there. Uh, this is definitely one that you could keep an eye out on, on for a, uh, an Act 2 Mercenary. Slow target by 75% is definitely going to keep him alive longer because the thing that he's attacking is going to be much slower to kill him. So I would definitely, if you had one of these and you were at level 33 and you had an Act 2 Mercenary, I would throw this on him with an Am Rune in it. Uh, just see if you can find an Ethereal one at that. And then, um, you know, let that slows target, you know, really work its magic. Next on the list is the Soul Feast Tyne Warfork at 46 to 116 damage. Uh, this one is level 35 requirements, so we're, we're getting pretty high here. Uh, the Soul Feast War Tyne is 150 to 190% enhanced damage, and it has a variable attack rating of 150 to 250, so kind of a a lot of little, little things there that might make this not as desirable. Because if it had really low attack rating and really low damage, you might not want it. Um, it has 7% mana steal and 7% life steal, which are both static. And then it has a 20% slower stamina drain, which is just weird. Uh, I don't. I, every time I see that on something, I always think, why? Uh, and the negative requirement's 20%. So, you know, it's a little bit easier to wield. Alright, next on our list, we have the Hone Sun, Sud, Sundan Yari with 107 to 217 damage. 
Um, has a very high strength requirement there of 101. So we're getting into some pretty high strength requirement weapons. This one is 160 to 200 percent enhanced damage, and it adds 20 to 40 just straight on there. 45 percent chance of crushing blow, which is amazing. Uh, crushing blow is a very good attack. We haven't talked about crushing blow yet because none of the other weapons have had crushing blow on them yet. But let's go ahead and, and do a brief synopsis because I've talked about this in all my videos. Crushing bow blow will deal damage to a target based on what kind of target they are. So if it's a normal monster, it does 25% of the monster's current hit points. If they are a named monster, like a notorious monster a, or a boss, it does 12.5% based on their current hit points. And if they are a player, it does 10% based on their current hit points. So very interesting effect there. And as you can see, it also repairs durability, uh, one in 10 seconds. So if you found an ethereal one of these uh, with three sockets, you know, you could put in some pretty nice runes, make this into a very, very nice spear. Um, and then you could even up it to the hell difficulty if you really wanted to. So, you know, that would get the damage way up. Of course, it would also increase the requirements by quite a bit. Uh, but if you found an ethereal one of these, upped it to the hell difficulty, and then uh, tacked in the right runes, it could be a pretty powerful weapon. Uh, last on the Nightmare version items is the Spire of Honor Lance. Uh, with 101 to 382 damage, plus 3 to combat skills for Paladin only uh, at level 39. 20% uh, faster hit recovery, 200% enhanced damage, which is variable between 150 to 200%. Um, interesting there, because that's going to be a pretty big damage um, like variable. 25% bonus to attack rating. Uh, plus damage to demons based on character level, which is actually uh, one to, or sorry, one point five per level, up to one hundred and forty-eight percent. So one to one hundred and forty-eight uh, percent. It also has twenty-five percent enhanced defense, so it's going to give you a little bit of extra defense there. Replenish life, twenty, and uh, plus three to light radius. So very interesting. It definitely seems to have been made specifically for a charge paladin. All right, so first on the hell version of the uniques is the Ariox Needle Hyperion Spear. Uh, this one is 115 to 392 damage. Uh, very, very high strength and dex requirements there, as you can see. Level 81 requirement. Uh, very fast attack speed, plus 4 to all skills. So very, very high plus to all skills there. Not quite what you would need to make up for losing a shield, because I think plus 5 is what you need to make up for losing a shield. And um, the other problem there is that it varies. So it varies between 2 to 4. So you can get a crappy Ariox Needle with only plus 2 to skills, or a really good one with plus 4. So, yeah, interesting there. Uh, plus 30% increased attack speed. So that's going to make it an extremely fast spear. It has 230% enhanced damage, which can vary between 180 to 230 it has ITD on it, which is very, very nice. 394 extra poison damage over 10 seconds, just slapped right on top. And then, uh, that's, that's it. Oh, 50% chance of deadly strike, which is double damage. So deadly strike will actually stack with critical strike and things like that on, uh, on uh, Barbarian, uh, Amazon, etc. Um, but it stacks in a weird way. So, like, for instance, if you have times... If you have Critical Strike and it has a 50% chance on your Amazon and you hit a target, if Critical Strike does not roll successfully, then Deadly Strike rolls right after it. Um, they won't go up to four times, so you can't get both. But you will, but having Deadly Strike on something will kind of make sure that you always at least get your, your times two off, which is very interesting. Um, next on the list is the Viper Folk... Man Catcher at 142 to 312 damage. Uh, very fast attack speed, as you can see there. A uh, little 71 requirement. Now, this one is 190 to 240% enhanced damage, 200 to 250 attack rating, so variable there quite a bit. 50% increased attack speed, so a very, very fast weapon. 325 extra poison damage over 10 seconds. Kind of like a theme going on here between the extra poison damage on both these. Uh, poison resist 30 to 50 percent, 15 percent chance to cast level nine. Poison explosion on striking, which is weird. That means there has to be a dead body nearby for it to trigger, because poison explosion is the one that explodes the corpses. 
Hmm. Very odd. Not sure what I would use that on, to be honest. All right, and last but not least is the Steel Pillar Warpike. The Steel Pillar Warpike is 118 to 640 damage. As you can see, a huge amount of damage there. Uh, level 69 requirement, normal attack speed, indestructible. 25% increased attack speed, 260% enhanced damage, which varies between 210 to 260. So there's going to be a big variable on the damage there. Negative 20% to target's defense, 25% increased attack speed, and uh, 50 to 80% enhanced defense. So some uh, two two variables there, which may make it not, not desirable. I mean, if you got the lowest damage and the lowest defense, you might be looking for a better one. Obviously, you can socket this one, and the uh, the main draw here seems to be the massive amount of damage, and the fact that it's indestructible would think, make you think, hey, maybe I could use it on a Impale Amazon. Could be a good move there, I don't know. Alright, well that pretty much covers it for all of the unique spears. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unique Items, and if you're interested in trying to find any of these items, um, do feel free to check in the description. I always have some links to Magic Find videos, uh, various Magic Find um, you know, things that you can use to actually find this gear. And uh, <laughs> now that Diablo 2 Resurrected is much, much closer to coming out, um, these videos are all the more fun because we know we're going to be able to find these items soon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, see ya. Thank